that, that was a hit. That had to have been a hit. That, the helmet moved. Hi, my name's Josh Brooks, and I'm the Digital Marketing Director here at Hardhead Veterans. During my time in Afghanistan and Iraq, I heard about and witnessed the number of my fellow Marines being tagged in the helmet by a 762 by 39 round coming from the AK-47 of a Taliban fighter or Iraqi insurgent. Oh, shit. Hey, we got a sniper. Dude, I, you got shot. I did get shot. I saw it hit your Kevlar. I got fucking... Lucky son of a bitch, look at that. Throughout all four of my deployments, we were using the standard issue Marine Corps lightweight helmet systems, which are only an NIJ 3A plus rated all airman helmet. This means those helmets were only rated to stop up to a 44 Magnum in resistance to penetration testing. So how is it possible that those 3A rated helmets were capable of stopping a 762 by 39 round? We're gonna dive a bit deeper in this video and show you a variety of field experiments that are gonna answer this question. First, let's talk about how helmets are tested in a lab environment. In order to truly understand the capabilities of a helmet, manufacturers like us need to send our products into an accredited NIJ laboratory to undergo rigorous testing from a third party. This testing is conducted to an exacting standard and it replicates worst case scenario kinetic impacts. This testing not only works to prove efficacy to our customers, but it also works to allow manufacturers like us to improve our processes and build hardier protective equipment. Lab tests like this are done to a known standard. When we put our product in the hands of NTS or National Technical Systems and tell them that we would like to test to the NIJ 3A plus standard, they know exactly what that means and they know exactly how those tests are supposed to be conducted. They put the helmet through repeatable tests and then give us the raw data with a pass or fail grid. This tells us exactly how our product performed when put up against the absolute worst case scenario impact. What this does is it gives us metrics as to how our helmets will perform should the end user be put in a situation where they face the absolute worst impact. What it does not do is tell us what our helmet is capable of in field impacts. That's because field impacts are nearly impossible to replicate on a consistent basis due to the circumstances of combat situations and the large number of what ifs that can occur in, it, in these environments. What you're about to see is me on the range conducting a series of experiments. These are not ballistic helmet tests. We're gonna to try to replicate something of a combat shot now. Right now we're on about the 300 yard line. This berm behind me represents our 340 yard line. We're gonna throw a shot of the range that we're on here uh, up so you guys can see what our yard lines look like. But that's the 340 yard line. We're uh, pace counted 40 yards up from that. This puts us at roughly 300 yards, it's not exact. And what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this instead of shooting it dead on like we're replicating a test, we're gonna shoot it at an oblique so that we can replicate a soldier or a Marine running behind cover, taking a round from a 7.62 by 3.9 as he travels between cover. All right, so we're back on the firing line here. We're, uh, we got the helmet down at about 300 yards. You'll be able to see it on a spotting scope that we have set up down there out of the wind. Uh, we're gonna be taking shots with 7.62 by 3.9 out of a, a pretty commonplace AK that you're seeing in places like Ukraine right now. This is a very similar build to what we're seeing in a lot of modern combat. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, try to take these shots. Uh, it might take a few shots to actually get this because I'm using a three powered optic. This is a ac actually, believe it or not, a fairly common setup right now. So here we go, Are you ready? That was a hit. That had to have been a hit. That the helmet moved. <laughs> all right, so we just checked the footage, and it looks like we hit up on the top. We're going to drive down now. I don't know if you all noticed, but we also stovepiped that shot. All right, so we got a 7.62 by 3.9 around here. It looks like we hit here. And again, this is we're simulating a, an oblique shot. So the helmet was like this. Round came down range. It impacted right here. The helmet did what it's supposed to do. The geometry of it caused it to exit right here is what it looks like. Let's find out. So as we can see, the head form is mostly okay. We got a little bit of um, a ding right here on the cheek. I don't know what that could have been from one of the other shots for all we know. Uh, I don't see any impacts on this side, but this is again a 7.62 by 3.9 round, 300 yards at an oblique angle. We can see pretty well that the helmet did exactly what it's expected to do. So the round entered here, the geometry of the helmet cause the round to come and push out the side, which is pretty much exactly what we expected it to do. Um, so when you hear about a 7.62 by 3.9 round in combat doing something like this, 
It's not because the helmet is inherently rated to take a 7.62 by 3.9 round in a worst case scenario impact. It's because the geometry of the helmet and the randomness of ballistics can cause something like this to happen from time to time. All right, nine millimeter coming out of the M17. Uh, normally nine millimeters used to test for back face deformation when you're doing ballistic helmet testing at the NIJ3A level. You're gonna do five shots on a helmet in an officially sanctioned test. You're gonna shoot the front, both sides, the back and the crown of the helmet. What you're intending to do is get an average back face deformation number below 25.4 millimeters across the board on the helmet. Uh, obviously we don't have clay out here. You'd normally use a ballistics clay to take those measurements and you'd measure it on the head form itself. Uh, but today, for the purpose of this, the first thing we're gonna do, and since we're doing experiments, is first, I'm gonna shoot this helmet five times. We're gonna shoot it front, side, top, and rear. I'm gonna show you what the inside of the helmet looks like. Then we're gonna lean this table over and I'm gonna shoot it with nine millimeter until we get a complete penetration of the helmet. I'm predicting it's gonna take somewhere between 20 and 30 rounds for us to actually reach that breaking point, uh, but we'll find out. All right, here we go. Shot on the right side of the helmet, here we go. Three, two, one. Weapon on safe. All right, here we go, shot in the back. Three, two, one. Now keep in mind, in an NIJ test, a fair hit on the side is going to be pretty much the center of this patch. We're going to show you on screen right now what that looks like when it's coming from NTS. All right, shot on the left side of the helmet. Three, two, and one. Looks like we hit right here. All right, now we're going to go for that crown shot. We push the table over. Uh, after that, we're going to show you the inside of the helmet. All right, here we go. Crown shot in three, two, one. Now keep in mind, we're shooting at a downhill angle. All right, go ahead, put this on safe, aim it down range. We're gonna take the pads out. We can see the impact was right here. <clears throat> Let's take all these pads out. Interestingly enough, I'm probably gonna put these micro lattice pads in another helmet after this, because they're still in pristine condition. All right, so you can see this little bulge here. That's our crown shot. This one right here was our other one side. This one right here is our other side, which we shot a bit low. This, this right here is the back, and that is the front. This is the ATE Gen 2. And now we're gonna go ahead and just uh, torture the hell out of it. How does that sound, guys? Let's go. All right, now for the actual experiment phase of this. Keep in mind, what you saw right there is not entirely indicative of what you're gonna see at an NTS or an official test with professionals, all right? I'm the digital marketing guy. I go watch these tests get done. I'm not the guy that actually makes the tests. But what we're gonna do now is a really fun experiment. I'm gonna shoot nine mil into the crown of that helmet until we get penetration. Uh, I'm guessing between 20 and 30 rounds. We're gonna stop every five. All right, here we go, first five rounds. We actually uh, knocked that helmet loose a little bit. <laughs> right, so first five rounds, there's definitely no penetration. There's a, a good rip in the outer aramid layer right here that I'm sure you can see. Looking at the helmet itself, let's go ahead and put five more in there. And we're out. Let's flip this table up and see if we got any penetration. I'll tell you one thing, Bob's definitely not a happy guy. So. Here are our impacts. We have one right here that just kind of tore. We've got this one, which was the first round, which kind of went errant. And then we've got uh, a bunch of the impacts right here. We can see some deformation starting on the inside of the shell, like some significant deformation. Um, this is not quite indicative of what you would see with something large like a 44 Magnum. This is more indicative of uh, like towards the end of our V50 tests, but uh, I believe we're still gonna be good to go for a little bit, especially if we change our point of impact, we could probably get even more. But I want to put all of the shots into this one spot to see how many we can take in one spot. So what do you say on this one? We go ahead and just dump 20, or that whole magazine into it, Cody, what do you think? Or do you think we should stop every five rounds? I'll tell you what, let us know down in the comments for next time. Right now I'm cooking in the sun, I don't know if you see my arms. We're just gonna go ahead and dump. Next time, We'll stop every time. Maybe, if you tell us to. What's up? Same strap. Ah, is that our culprit?
We're gonna put 10 into it this time. Uh, we're actually, we've been shooting kind of on the left side. We're gonna shoot on the right side this time. All right, ready? Here we go. He's not making it easy to shoot that right side. So that was two of the five, and then we flipped the helmet because we kept losing our spot because it was uh, being kind of wobbly. So we're gonna shoot three and then we'll check it. Here we go. Uh, you know what? Let's see how it did. So we can see our shot groups right here. We can actually kind of feel the material giving. It's also extremely hot out right now. It's about 110. Um, we don't have penetration yet. We do have what I would consider to be not insignificant back face deformation, but that's actually not absolutely terrible considering all of those rounds are hitting right there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, that's all we got for out here today on the range. Um, I'm gonna talk to you in like two seconds, but I'm gonna be back at the shop. Ready, go. Hey, welcome back. We're in the war room again. And it's now 70 degrees instead of 110, which I appreciate. Let's uh, talk about what just happened. In field experiments, we can explore a range of what-if scenarios, pushing helmets and armor far past their limits. We can also attempt to replicate lab standards and impacts while acknowledging that the exact NIJ environment can't be precisely reproduced by individuals in the field. Professionals at labs like the National Technical Systems ensure accurate testing down to the smallest detail. While these field tests are intriguing, they aren't definitive measurements of success. When considering purchasing ballistic gear, always rely on accredited third-party lab results tailored to the specific product you're looking to purchase. Transparent publication of these results is essential for informed decision making. That's all we got for you guys today. And if you want to check out some actual tests from the NIJ lab where we conduct our tests, check out this video. It's in the card in one of these corners. Also, let me know down in the comments there if you've got any experiments you'd like to see us do on our helmets. Uh, hey, Cody. Yeah. You think we can shoot one of these with a tank? Fuck, I hope so. <laughs>